Hymn to the Black Goddess. Moon visceral erotica, please immolate my manic mind. Dark balladry arise in me to sing beside the throne of her. Tenebrous rites preserve her name in tongue that history mislaid, torn from our mouths like Philomel by Hyperion's cruelly shining blade. Beneath the sands, in ancient lands, secret lie so speciously concealed. In darkened tombs, like pregnant wombs, blackened things doth violently fornicate. The blood so richly ebbing dark flows from the heart as it doth cease to resonate. Now that the fervor is inspired till dawn doth break, it shan't abate this night. I've said to him, oh yeah, hello, how are you? My name is John Biro. And he said, oh, you're that guy from Bensdale with the snake orgy. I've never seen a snake. And whatever he was referring to, I have no idea. The snake orgy. Let's think about that one. Uh, well, I have no idea because I don't really talk, I don't really talk to them. What are the truths that people don't, I, I have no idea. I don't talk to these people, I don't really know them. They know me though. None of them really know anything about me whatsoever. And once or twice I've actually tried to tell them the truth about me, but they don't want to know it, it's not nearly theatrical enough for them. Another one is that I commonly sacrifice various animals to a god or gods. There's another one that I'm actually a woman, that I'm not really a man at all, and that I'm just pretending. Another one is that I murdered my grandparents with a screwdriver when I was eight years old. That's another fascinating one. And then your standard gothic things, you know, I have sex in graveyards and that sort of thing. And that really is my private business. People have perceived me to be very, very angry. Sometimes I can look very angry and abrasive. So that's some of the things that I that I think I must express in my manners or my gait. But that's, that's all I can think of. I'm, I'm not really conscious often of how I behave or, or, or what I'm expressing about myself. I really don't care. A lot of people say they don't care what other people think of them, but I, I really don't. I never ever think about it. And then every now and then someone like a, a mother or a girlfriend you know, inconsequential people like that, will come along and say, oh, think about how this reflects on me. And to be terribly honest, I never did. People don't hear what I'm saying because my vocal style is a kind of nihilistic shriek, which is very difficult for comprehension. And, and so it's more about the rhythm and the meter of the words and it has absolutely no, nothing to do with the sentiments I'm expressing. The way the syllables sound with each other and resonate together, that, that's, that's more important. Black metal is not about concepts at all. It's not about, uh, it's not about uh, complex music or you know, fast fingers or anything like that. It's about, it's about stimulating a visceral and primitive part of a human being, and that can only be affected when all rational principle is taken away and we appeal to the animal nature in man. And if one were to ask a lot of black metal people uh, what they get from that music, it's that every, they all describe this, this inextricable feeling. It's a dark feeling, but it's not a sad feeling. I call it a, a pure aesthetical moment when we've taken away, we, we've taken away all of the thoughts and the concepts and the reason, and we've taken away even, even emotions. Emotions have become such a cliche, and then, and suddenly we strip it all back and we reach inside people, and out of, out of it comes this, this strange exultancy, this, this, this thing that, in its complete unreason, is so perfectly logical and satisfying. To call it a passion would be an understatement. It's, it's what I call the pure aesthetical moment. And that's what black metal's about. Sorry, I went into a bit of a riff there. 
and that's exactly what the music's against. It's forget that, forget the dogma, we forget the forget the reason. Human beings are not rational animals. We're not. And I think that uh, I think that that irrational side of us needs some sort of expression or stimulation. Uh, Plato said that the poet distorts reality, and he said it with disdain. But I think reality needs to be distorted. For a while I wanted to go to university and get a PhD in some sort of frivolously useless subject. Something like classical studies or literature, and then I might lecture at university and walk around with a leather-bound tome under my arm, whistling you know, the 1812 overture. Or you know, be a real pedant, you know, walk around conjugating my verbs all day, that sort of thing. And then when I really thought about it, that's not important. God, no, that is by no means important. It's not even pleasantly unimportant. And so what I really want to be, I don't know, a, a poet, a musician, an actor, something, anything, I want to, I want to conform to every dream, uh, experience experience everything I possibly can, uh, treat each moment as a caprice and a whim, uh, satisfy every pleasure and create more perhaps. And that, that, that's, that's what I want to be, the Hellenistic ideal.